Welcome back to Face the State. I'm Ariana Bennett. Thank you for staying with us. Well, in the effort to increase treatment options for people struggling with mental illness and addiction, Reno now has a new option. Steve Schell and Dr. Nova Anderson, both with the Reno Behavioral Healthcare Hospital, are here now to talk about that. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you Thank for having you. us. So I understand that it's been 30 years since Reno got a new health a healthcare hospital of this type. 30 years is a long time. Very long, yes. So tell me about the new facility. Well, you know, I, I made Reno my home a few years ago, and I'm so proud that we've built a very modern, state-of-the-art treatment facility. Um, Reno Behavioral Healthcare Hospital has 124 beds, and we'll be serving all ages, and we will provide both inpatient and outpatient programs for psychiatric and addiction treatment. And it was very important for us to build something like this for our community. Um, as, as many may know, Nevada ranks 50th in the country for mental health services, so there is a lot that still needs to be done in our state, particularly in our community. We have one of the highest suicide rates in the country and one of the highest drug overdose rates. So we clearly saw that there was a need to build something like that here. Yeah, clearly the demand is outstripping the supply. Uh, would you say that you know, we're pretty limited in the number of options that people have, places that they can go here? Yeah, we're very, very limited on options here. And in fact, a lot of our residents here go out of state for their treatment. And we'd like to be able to provide a very high quality option for those residents here in Northern Nevada. Okay, so uh, what types of patients will you be treating? Actually, I'll let Dr. Anderson answer that. Um, it's all ages, so um, people who are suffering from um, a current mental illness or somebody who maybe has an onset of a mental illness, um, chronic substance abuse um, issues, and that's for all ages. Um, we know a lot of the mental health issues begin in adolescence, um, so having a program that they can come to and be assessed and we know early treatment is going to help them further on down the road. I think an interesting thing about mental health is that, you know, in history it's been kind of treated as a separate piece of health, separate from, you know, illnesses like diabetes, for example, which mm -hmm. is a, you know, chronic condition, but people see it as treatable with medicine, and I don't know that they see mm -hmm. mental illness in kind of the same light. Has that been kind of what you guys have found? I think that's still very much a stigma in our country. Um, it seems like we only talk about it when tragedies happen. Um, but it's always with us, and I think the more conversations we can have, the more that we bring normalcy um, to what's going on with people who are experiencing a mental illness, the better the community will understand it. Um, but you're right, it's no different than having diabetes or having high blood pressure. Um, many, many mental illnesses are very successful and treated uh, with medications, with talk therapy. It seems like it's probably um, it dissuades people from reaching out because they don't want to be labeled, um, mm -hmm. you know, as something that's incurable. People will see it as, oh, this is who you are instead of just mm -hmm. something you're currently dealing with, right? Right. I think the fact that there has not been another facility built like this in Northern Nevada in over 30 years says quite a bit. And I think that's one of the reasons why we decided to build here because we need more options. Yeah. We want people to have, you know, choices, you know, and, and hopefully seek treatment as soon as they can. Now you just started taking patients, so have you had interest already? We have quite a bit of interest, yes, from all over Northern Nevada and California. So there is quite a bit of interest. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to serving, you know, those that need us. Okay, so when you say it's um, inpatient and outpatient so people can check in and, and stay there, is it long term or is it shorter term stays? How does that work? Some is short term, some will be long term. I'll let Dr. Anderson go over her programs. Um, we're we're going to have all kinds of programs to help people identify what their triggers are, to help them um, kind of know when they're starting to slip and, and get into an area that's troublesome for them. Um, so we do a lot of um, your normal therapies that everyone hears about. Um, but we also do uh, trauma focused. Um, so really getting in and looking at the trauma that kind of started um, everything for the patient and helping them normalize it for the people around them. Is it um, often trauma that, that starts a mental health issue? Often. You, we often find that it is something that's happened to them that has gone unresolved and not as you spoke to, people don't want to come and get help because they don't want to be seen as different. Um, and they don't want to have some label that that's all anybody sees is this label. 
Uh, so we teach them how to look beyond the label and, um, and help the people around them understand um, what's going on as well. Okay, and, and it works. I mean, this is, this is not a lifetime diagnosis. There's nothing we can do about it. This is something that actually could, you know, get real help for, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and that's what they're, we're there for, is to help them understand that this is a normal process for them. And they may have ups and downs, but if they understand what's going on, they're going to be able to manage um, that um, road for them a lot easier. Okay, so what would you say um, are some things that people should look for if they think that they themselves or someone they know might be struggling with something and it might be a good time to seek out some help or some treatment? So we tell people to look for those things that are outside of the typical behaviors. Um, you know your family, you know your friends better than anybody. Um, so you understand if I'm looking at this and this really isn't typical for this, um, this family member, my friend, um, then that's something you want to start that conversation. Um, having a conversation with somebody often puts them at ease and say and be able to say, yeah, you're right, I'm not feeling quite right. You know, something is off. Um, so that's what we encourage. Um, it's, it's more about duration. You know, everybody gets kind of sad. Everybody has those low moments. But we're looking for those things that are going on too long. I'm sleeping too much. I'm not sleeping. I'm eating too much, I'm not eating. Um, you know, those things that are just um, in duration kind of impacting the person's work, life, and love. Um, then we want then we want to have those conversations. Okay, and yeah, I mean, this comes up a lot, as you mentioned, when there are tragedies like, you know, school shootings and things like that. Um, for the parents who are kind of worried about this situation and, um, you know, they've got kids at home who might be a little freaked out about going to school, um, especially with all of the recent incidents we've had of um, phone calls in that turned out to be not real threats, but still kind of mm -hmm. scary to parents. Mm -hmm. um, do you have advice for parents of the best way to, to you know, help their kids kind of get through this? Talk. Um, talk to them. Um, not in a way that's going to scare them. Do it for each child is going to handle this differently and you're going to speak differently to a five-year-old than you are your 15-year-old. Um, but put it in terms that they understand help them and encourage them to tell you when things are out of that typical behavior. If they're hearing things um, or seeing things on Facebook, um, come and tell me, you know, make yourself open uh, to have those conversations so that you're actively um, involved and you can pick up on those problems. Okay, now another big big thing that you guys are doing is um, addiction treatment and obviously opioids have been a really hot topic in Nevada um, over the last few years and nationally over the last few years as well. So um, what's your treatment protocol for that type of addiction? Um, well, we would absolutely be using our, our psychiatrist, our medical director. Um, they're going to set the tone for the actual medical treatments that need to be taking place. Um, but we're going to be doing more of those building on um, why, why are we using that drug? Are we not talking about those feelings? Are we not addressing what's really going on? Um, and sometimes it's, um, it's very simple. Somebody has had a lot of pain um, and then have been prescribed some medications and it got out of hand. Um, so our job is to help them you know, look at why am I taking the medication. It doesn't mean medication is bad, um, and it doesn't mean everybody who uses something is going to become addictive, but those that are, we're here to help and, and set those programs in place for them. Okay. And, oh, go ahead. And we plan to focus on education as well. We want mm -hmm. the community to be aware of what the issues are out there and that treatment is available. Mm -hmm. I think the more education we can do, the better our community will be. Okay, well, we just have a couple minutes left, um, but I'm curious, how far would you say we are, uh, you know, in northern Nevada, and then, if you know, nationally, from really meeting the need um, in terms of, uh, you know, mental and behavioral health treatment facilities and beds and things like that? We're making great strides in the state of Nevada, even though we are very low ranked, you know, in the country compared to other states, we are making a lot of progress. We built a facility in Las Vegas four years ago that has done very well, and we plan to do very well here, I believe, in serving the community. But I think we're making great strides. There are a lot of great 
um, uh, colleagues here in the community that really care about the issues and we're working very closely with all of them to make sure we're providing the best treatment that we can. Do we still though need a lot more places like this or, or are we getting close to you know, meeting the need? We still need more outpatient providers. Um, and that's really across the country, but you know we're encouraging more practitioners to, to open outpatient practices and serve the community that way, in addition to what we'll be doing at the hospital. Okay. Um, well, we've got about a minute left. Um, you guys do take insurance, right? We do, yes. All insurances? Yes, we'll do And then, um, do you have any help for people who can't afford it? I mean, is it, I imagine it might get expensive. Well, we, you know, we will serve anyone you know, that comes to our hospital. I mean, we're there here, here to support the community. We have nurses, counselors, therapists available around the clock to help triage the situation and determine what you know, the person needs, whether it's our hospital or, or another resource in the community. But we view ourselves as a community resource, and we encourage people to call. Okay, and you are in uh, South Reno? Yes, 6940 Sierra Center Parkway off of South Virginia. Okay, well, we are about out of time, but thank you both so much thank for your you. time. I thank sure you. appreciate it. Thank you. All right, well, that is it for this episode of Face the State. But for more information or to see past episodes, you can just head to our website. That's ktvn.com. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you next week.